A world at war. Brave women on the front lines, fighting shoulder to shoulder with men. But their bravery came at a price. They faced a fate far worse than any man could imagine if captured by the enemy. Today, right here on Vintage TV, we're diving deep into the horrifying tales of what the Nazis did to these captured female soldiers during World War II. Their journey through history is not for the faint of heart. The Courageous Women of World War II Female soldiers played crucial roles in the armed forces during World War II, with various nations including Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union, and listing women in roles such as mechanics, pilots, radio operators, clerks, and nurses. Some women even took on specialized roles as spies and resistance fighters. Among these nations, the Soviet Union had the largest contingent of female soldiers, with an estimated 800,000 women serving in various capacities. Many of these women were actively involved in combat, including roles as snipers and pilots. However, like any soldier in combat, these women faced the risk of capture and becoming prisoners of war. One of the most remarkable stories of World War II is the deployment of female snipers by the Soviet Union during the conflict. Approximately two and a half thousand female snipers were engaged in combat operations, primarily targeting German forces. Astonishingly, around 500 of these women managed to survive the war, claiming a combined kill count of approximately 11,000 German soldiers. Nevertheless, women in the Soviet Red Army served in diverse roles beyond snipers and combatants. Many of them worked as medics, providing essential health care support to their fellow soldiers. Tragically, German officers issued orders to execute women who were found fighting against the German army during World War II. This resulted in the execution of hundreds of women, often following brutal torture for information. Operation Barbarossa the impact of the 1917 Russian Revolution cannot be overstated when discussing the role of women in World War II. This revolution granted Russian women legal equality and the right to work on equal terms with men. As World War II erupted, many women eagerly joined the army, driven by the hope of taking the fight to the Germans. The Soviet decision to allow women to actively participate in the war effort was met with great offense within Nazi Germany. Nazi ideals and expectations for women were fundamentally different from those in the Soviet Union. Adolf Hitler's vision for women in Nazi Germany revolved around traditional roles such as housewives, dedicated to staying at home, raising numerous children, and being subservient to their husbands. For the Germans, witnessing women in the Red Army was not only a military threat, but also a direct challenge to their ideology. It suggested that the Communists and Soviets were not just dangerous adversaries, but also ideologically backward in their vision for society. Consequently, women who fought and were captured by the Germans were subject to appalling treatment. The act of allowing women to bear arms was viewed as a horrific policy of communism by the Germans. This perception contributed to the terrible treatment of female soldiers when they fell into enemy hands. They were scorned, given derogatory nicknames, and the sight of women in uniform was associated with evil in the eyes of the Germans. These deeply entrenched beliefs in Nazi ideology led to the targeting of Soviet women soldiers, portraying them as treacherous and aiming to undermine traditional values. It's worth noting that these views weren't exclusive to the Nazis. Even ordinary German military personnel were disgusted by the idea of women taking up arms against them. Shortly after the invasion of the Soviet Union, Field Marshal Gunter von Klug issued an order stating that all women in uniform were to be shot, aligning with Nazi ideologies. While this order was later rescinded, the execution of many women did take place. In addition to this illegal order, various other directives were issued against Soviet women. Many German generals ordered that women should be shot or hanged from the nearest tree. Despite the adversity they faced, approximately 800,000 women served in the Soviet armed forces, constituting around 5% of the entire military. As the war progressed, the number of women in the armed forces continued to rise, 
and many played crucial roles in the healthcare sector, providing essential care to wounded soldiers as nurses, doctors, and medical officials. One remarkable story that stands out among the female soldiers of World War II is that of the Night Witches, an awe-inspiring all-women combat squadron that struck fear into the hearts of their enemies. Night Witches The Night Witches earned their notorious nickname from their German adversaries. These incredible women belonged to the 588th Night Bomber Regiment and were among the most famous combat units of the entire war. It's important to note that they came together during a time when women were officially barred from combat in the Soviet Union. However, their formation became a reality thanks to the efforts of Marina Raskova, who personally contacted Joseph Stalin and secured clearance to build female combat units. Starting from late 1941, these female air units were assembled, primarily consisting of volunteers in their late teens and early 20s. The Night Witch's missions required a high level of skill, often taking them deep into enemy airspace under the cover of darkness. What set them apart was their unique attack technique. Instead of conventional approaches, they would idle their engines near their targets and glide to the bomb release point using only the wind. The eerie sound this created resembled broomsticks, earning them the moniker Night Witches. Throughout the war, this remarkable regiment logged approximately 30,000 hours in flight and dropped over 3,000 tons of bombs on enemy positions. However, these missions were not without peril, and many of these brave pilots fell into the hands of the Nazis. Once captured, the fate of these fearless fighter pilots was a harrowing one. They, like many other female soldiers, were subjected to the horrors of concentration camps or even execution. Battle of Stalingrad The invasion of Russia by Nazi forces in June 1941 marked the first significant confrontation the Nazis had with women in combat roles. While the Russians were taken by surprise by this audacious move, the Germans had their own startling revelation when they encountered the Soviet forces. They found that among the Russian ranks, there were numerous women actively participating in combat. This was a stark departure from the experiences the Nazis had in their previous invasions and occupations of countries like Poland, France, and Norway. The sight of women carrying firearms and manning field weaponry elicited shock and, in some cases, disgust among the German troops. However, what truly confounded the Germans was the sheer scale of female involvement in the Soviet war effort. Approximately 200,000 women would go on to be decorated for their contributions in the field, and an astounding 89 would be awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union, the highest possible honor for military action. The presence of capable women in uniform left the German high command in a state of bewilderment. On June 29, 1941, Field Marshal Guter von Klug issued a now infamous order that any captured women soldiers were to be shot dead. It's noteworthy that these orders were not issued by the SS or the Gestapo, but rather by commanders on the battlefield. This practice was normalized over time, with individual commanders passing on the directive, including Field Marshal Walter von Reichnau and 75th Division General Ernst Hammer. As a result of these bigoted and othering attitudes of Nazi soldiers on the ground, any brave women on the Eastern Front faced the grim fate of execution should they fall into Nazi captivity. Initially, when the Germans attacked the Soviet Union, many women were turned away and denied the right to serve. However, due to the heavy losses sustained during Operation Barbarossa, attitudes began to change, and many women who wished to fight were given the opportunity. One notable deployment of women within the Red Army was the establishment of female air crews, with these regiments participating in air battles and combat missions during World War II. Some of these units were involved in the fierce fighting over Stalingrad, while others were tasked with bombing German targets, with women taking control of the planes. Initially, three regiments were planned to be exclusively female, and they often included hundreds of air women. However, the most famous and feared deployment of women in the Red Army was as snipers. Nearly two and a half thousand female snipers were trained and deployed during the war, earning a notorious reputation as deadly marksmen. 
for instance, Ludmila Pavlenchenko, one of the most renowned female snipers, notched an astonishing 309 confirmed kills, an exceptional achievement. Women's contributions extended beyond sniping. Many served in conventional infantry roles such as machine gunners and took on various other responsibilities, including tank driving. Additionally, female anti-aircraft batteries were formed, especially in Stalingrad, where women engaged in ground combat against the enemy. Women were allowed to join Stalin's second line of defense, manning guns and providing medical care. As a result, many gained credibility and respectability by joining the Second World War. German Atrocities on the Eastern Front Astonishingly, as the German forces invaded the Eastern Front, they took a staggering six million prisoners of war. What's even more shocking is that around half of this immense number would not survive. The Geneva Convention, meant to safeguard the rights and treatment of prisoners, was reduced to nothing more than a piece of paper during this brutal conflict. Hundreds and thousands of these prisoners were left to starve to death, a grim testament to the disregard for international law. For an army that once prided itself on professionalism, the Nazi forces took on a different and disturbing appearance on the Eastern Front. They seemed more like a collection of ruthless thugs molded by a fanatical ideology than a disciplined military force. In the eyes of the enemy, who could barely comprehend the presence of women in uniform, the Russian women soldiers were perhaps the most vulnerable among the prisoners of war. As we mentioned earlier, they were ordered to be shot dead upon capture, a horrifying directive that many faced. Many of these incredibly brave women soldiers endured substantial abuse as prisoners of war before their lives were extinguished. Knowing the grim fate that awaited them, it recorded and understood that some of these Russian women soldiers were willing to take their own lives rather than be captured and subjected to the brutality of the Nazi forces. Captured Women of World War II Despite the immense challenges, these women faced captivity with remarkable courage and determination. Their stories reveal the indomitable spirit that characterized so many female soldiers during World War II. Partisans The partisans played a pivotal role during World War II, and it was within these partisan units that many women found their calling, especially on the front lines and even behind enemy lines where they engaged in operations targeting German communications and supply lines. One striking aspect of the partisan movement was that women were regarded as equals, and as a result, they actively served and often took up arms as regular soldiers and guerrilla fighters would. This level of equality allowed women to contribute their skills and determination to the resistance efforts. However, it's essential to acknowledge the grim reality that some women who took part in partisan activities faced brutal consequences at the hands of the enemy. Lepra Rolick Among these brave women was Lepra Rolick, a young girl who actively participated in sabotage operations against the Germans. Her unwavering commitment to the cause led to her arrest and subsequent torture by the German forces. Even in the face of torture and threats, she refused to provide any information. In a tragic and heart-wrenching event, Lepra Rolick was offered one final chance to divulge information in front of a large crowd. She remained resolute in her refusal, and as a result, she was hanged by German officers. The manner of her execution was particularly cruel. She was placed on a box with a noose around her neck offered one last opportunity to betray her cause, and when she steadfastly declined, the box was kicked out from under her. Sawyer Kosmodenyan Kosmodenskaya She was just 18 when she was executed by the Germans, displaying remarkable bravery as a partisan during World War II. Volunteering to join the partisans, she operated deep behind enemy lines in German-occupied territory. During a combat mission near a village, she was captured by the enemy and subjected to horrific torture and humiliation. Despite the agony, she steadfastly refused to betray her fellow partisans and co-conspirators. Sentenced to death, her final words to a gathered crowd were unforgettable. There are 200 million of us. You can't hang us all. Zeneda Portnova Zeneda Portnova, just 15 years old, 
found herself thrust into the heart of World War II when she was visiting her family during the German invasion and became trapped behind enemy lines. Undeterred by the perilous circumstances, she undertook the dangerous mission of smuggling and concealing weapons, distributing crucial propaganda, and carrying out acts of sabotage against the occupation forces. However, fate took a grim turn during a shootout, resulting in her capture. In a desperate bid for freedom, she managed to wound one of her captors but was caught. Subsequently, she endured torture and was eventually led into a forest where she met her untimely end. Some accounts suggest she was tortured to death rather than being shot in the head. Masha Bruschino Masha Bruschino, a courageous Belarusian volunteer nurse, emerged as a beacon of hope during the darkest days of World War II. Amid the chaos, she tended to wounded Soviet soldiers in a secret hospital, offering not just medical care, but a chance at escape. With unwavering determination, she facilitated the clandestine provision of civilian clothing and false papers to these men, enabling their daring break for freedom. However, Masha's selflessness and bravery could not remain hidden forever. She was betrayed, arrested, and subject to a chilling public spectacle. Marched through the streets, she bore a placard that read, We are partisans, enduring the humiliation of shots fired by German troops. Her ordeal culminated at the gates of a yeast brewery and distillery, where she was hanged alongside two compatriots. Her lifeless body was left exposed for three agonizing days as the Germans callously refused to grant her the dignity of a proper burial. Tatiana Baranzina Tatiana Baranzina, a remarkable Soviet sniper, demonstrated unparalleled courage on the battlefield and earned the prestigious Hero of the Soviet Union Award, the nation's highest honor. In the heat of battle against German forces, Tatiana found herself wounded and sought refuge in a rye field to recover. With unwavering determination, she defended her position alongside fellow soldiers, using a machine gun to repel the enemy, killing many until she ran out of ammunition. Tragically, her valiant stand came to a horrifying end when two German soldiers discovered her hiding place. They subjected her to unspeakable brutality stabbing and mutilating her with bayonets and savagely beating her with her own rifle. The ultimate act of cruelty followed as Tatiana was shot in the head with an anti-tank grenade. Kasena Konstantinova Kasena Konstantinova was a medic who was also awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union. An army volunteer, she served as a medic on the Eastern Front after taking infantry training. She was very brave, carrying wounded soldiers, but was badly wounded in battle. While she killed 12 enemy soldiers before she sustained a head injury, she refused to reveal anything about Soviet operations in the area when she was taken prisoner. After being brutally tortured and mutilated, she was stabbed and pinned down with a stake through her body. She was found in this state, but buried with full military honors. Yelis Evader Trikina Yelis Evader Trikina emerged as a formidable figure among the partisans. As a leader of partisan groups, her small but resolute detachment conducted daring raids on Axis strongholds and undertook reconnaissance missions to gather crucial intelligence. She was sent to Pano to find out the size of enemy garrisons, but on the way she was seen and informed on to the enemy. Following her capture, Trikina was tortured before being shot outside. The Germans executed her after torturing and interrogating her like many other partisans. The Germans feared the partisans and executed many very quickly, since they viewed them as a very dangerous group. Christina Skarbek Christina Skarbek, often known as the bravest of the brave, was a Polish agent working for the British Special Operations Executive. She served as a courier for the Polish resistance and held the distinction of being the first serving female agent in the service. What's even more impressive, she was the longest serving female agent. Skarbek's espionage exploits took her on daring journeys through the depths of Nazi-occupied Europe while undercover. Her resourcefulness and exceptional success opened doors for the recruitment of more female agents throughout the war. However, her incredible journey took a perilous turn when she was captured by the Gestapo. 
It was only her canny mind and her brilliant application of strategy that saved her from a grim fate. Skarbek, along with a fellow agent, was arrested by Hungarian police in Budapest in January 1941. Following intense questioning by the Gestapo, Skarbek hatched a clever plan. She produced false symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis. But how did she do it? She bit her tongue until it bled, and the doctor present promptly fell for it, providing an incorrect diagnosis. Skarbek, often referred to as Britain's most glamorous spy, remains one of the most outstanding women war heroes to this day. Our journey through the untold stories of remarkable women in World War II continues with the extraordinary tale of Noor Inayat Khan. Noor Inayat Khan, often known as Nora Baker, was a British agent who played a pivotal role as a radio operator for the Special Operations Executive, SOE, in France. Under the codename Madeleine, she conducted her daring operations as part of the French Resistance. What set Noor apart was her lack of ruse. She was admired and recruited for her straightforwardness and honesty. Her entire philosophy behind joining the SOE was rooted in her nonviolent upbringing. However, this commitment to nonviolence placed her in some of the most perilous positions in the war. Tragically, Noor's unwavering dedication to the resistance would lead to her betrayal during her undercover work in France. In 1943, she was captured by the Gestapo. Even in captivity, Noor refused to yield. She was renowned as a dangerous and uncooperative prisoner who stood her ground until the very end. Her resilience and determination, however, could not prevent the inevitable. Along with three other women prisoners, Noor was taken to the notorious Dachau concentration camp in 1944, where they met a grim fate in the crematorium. Despite her tragic end, Noor's selfless bravery did not go unnoticed. She was posthumously awarded the George's Cross, a high honor for her extraordinary courage. Today, a memorial bust of her stands in London. Reba Whittle Reba Whittle stands as a shining example of fearless bravery, showcasing the indomitable spirit exhibited by many women during World War II. Her story also sheds light on the perplexing paradigm of sexism that these women had to contend with. Reba began her journey in June 1941 when she joined the U.S. Army as a nurse. But her dedication didn't stop there. In 1943, she underwent training as a flight nurse, embarking on a novel and perilous role. The concept of flight nurses was still in its infancy, and the risks were daunting. These nurses were responsible for picking up wounded soldiers from the battlefield, often taking on the responsibilities of doctors. All of this was done from aircraft that could themselves become targets, vulnerable to enemy fire. In September 1943, Whittle's C-47 aircraft took an unexpected turn. Flying 40 miles off course, she found herself alone in enemy territory. The flight, initially meant for carrying supplies, was not marked as a medical mission. Above the city of Aachen, German anti-aircraft fire struck her aircraft, resulting in injuries to Whittle, the pilot, and tragically the death of another crew member. The plane ultimately went down in German territory, and as Whittle and her crew survived the crash and escaped, German soldiers surrounded them. What's remarkable is that Whittle was the only American woman ever captured in the European theater by the enemy during World War II. The Nazis, however, had no idea how to deal with her, particularly as a prisoner of war. In a peculiar twist of fate, this patriarchal confusion may have inadvertently saved Whittle's life. After her recovery, she was transferred to a hospital in Stalag 9C, a Nazi prisoner of war camp. But remarkably, she wasn't in prison. She was put to work as a nurse. It was during her time in captivity that the International Red Cross intervened. They passed on her situation to the U.S. State Department. In January 1945, Reba Whittle was released to the Allies. Returning to the U.S. Army, she was awarded the Purple Heart for her exceptional service and valor. In a world where women were often underestimated, Reba Whittle found a way to not only serve, but also survive, all for the betterment of others. The Tragic Fate of Female Soldiers in World War II 
The annals of World War II are marked by the harrowing stories of countless female soldiers who met brutal ends at the hands of the Germans. Whether they were members of the Red Army or valiant partisans, an ominous decree and chilling instruction dictated their execution, often on the spot. Partisans, despite their resilience, often succumbed to ruthless interrogations, leading to horrifyingly savage outcomes hangings, shootings, and even butchered in horrifically savage scenes. After the war, very few of these soldiers were arrested or brought to justice. Within the Red Army, women played pivotal roles, a fact vehemently rejected by the Nazis. The inclusion of women in the military clashed with their values and ideals, branding it as a sinister and antiquated facet of Bolshevism and communism. Ironically, the policy permitting women to serve in the military thrust them onto the front lines against Nazi Germany. And there you have it, friends. The 10 unspeakable things Nazis did to captured female soldiers. As we close this chapter of history, let us not forget the sacrifices made by these brave souls. If you found this video as fascinating as we did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Also, if you have any historical topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.